Note on Business Insight, we speak to Michelle Bart. She is the World Service Head Engineer at Talo Oil, and also she is the first woman engineer in the petroleum industry in Kenya. And she'll tell us a bit about herself and also how Kenya, what are the steps that Kenya is taking to become commercially viable by 2020. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Who is Michelle Bart? Michelle Boyd is a petroleum engineer. Mm -hmm. I work for Talo Oil as a well service engineer covering East Africa. So that is Kenya, Uganda, and Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. Yes, I joined Talo two years ago. Before that, I was working at uh, BP, that's British Petroleum, mm -hmm. in the USA. Mm -hmm. I did uh, petroleum engineering for about seven years in different fields, but that one was more focused on production. So this is really great to be one of the pioneers mm -hmm. to join Kenya and also uh, just to see this new industry developing in Kenya. Was engineering your first choice as a career or was it a fallback plan? So I did go to Kapnyumere Girls High School, that is in Nandi County. I graduated, uh, did my form fourth year over there, and uh, I decided that I need to do my engineering. Unfortunately, uh, whenever the results came out, I didn't make the cut. And that was so disappointing. I don't know what happened in my KCSC. I didn't do so well. But anyway, I didn't give up. And that's when my parents said, you know what, you have a chance. You can go to America and you can do whatever you want to do. And that's what happened. So I joined one of the universities, that's Texas Tech University. And I actually pursued chemical engineering. And when I graduated, I got an offer as a summer internship at BP. And that's whenever it opened up my eyes. Uh, but basically just because I was really good in sciences and math, and that's how I started doing engineering. And when I got to the vision, and when I got also the experience of how to work in, uh, in the field, that opened my eyes and I knew this is what I wanted to do. If we can divert a little bit and talk about oil, does, what, what are the, currently what is Kenya producing and what are the prospects where, uh, maybe in a few years? At the moment we're not producing. At the moment we are still doing exploration and appraisal, so we're just drilling wells, uh, just to find out how much hydrocarbons do we still have in these basins. Uh, future plants, uh, you heard about EOPS, they've been talking about EOPS everywhere. So that's early oil uh, production uh, scheme project that is coming up. With that, uh, we are going to produce 2,000 wells, uh, 2,000 barrels per day. And that's a project we're going to kick off this year. Through the life cycle of the oil and gas industry, especially now that you're drilling oil, you're drilling wells at Trucano. The exploration of oil and gas didn't start just the other day. It didn't start with Talon in 2012. It started a long time ago. But because we didn't have the right equipment, you know, we couldn't really see what is, where is the oil deposits. But because the technology has really improved with time, we are able to see about these uh, hydrocarbon deposits. And we've gone to 2D, now we have 3D. I mean, technology has really improved over the years. After the geologists have discovered or uh, have acquired this information, they do talk to the drill engineer. Then the drill engineer comes in and, and drill the well. According to the, the places that they've been told by the geologists that this is where oil, oil deposits is. So they do drill and they do have a geology who works with them hand in hand to see what they had and what are the actuals. And from that, we just drill from one well to another, one well to another. Uh, some you're, some you, you get, some you don't, or some of them actually is not at the depth. So it's a plus or minus. So, and then after you've explored uh, and you finish your appraisal stage, that's whenever you go to development. Development is all about building pipelines, building all the surface facilities mm -hmm. uh, that will help out to make this uh, oil crude oil that we have you know drill and crude oil that we we're about to produce to make it commercial viable so after do putting all the surface facility in place the pi the pipeline in place that's whenever we go to know production mm -hmm. how are you able to balance work family and play it can be challenging sometimes because mm -hmm. you know you you're needed as a mother to i have two kids uh, my daughter is 11 years old and my son is seven and a half years old. Oh, since they were born, they all know mommy travels. 
and this is the part this is the nature of my job i travel at least 25 percent of my time yes i do travel so it, it can be challenging sometimes but um to find the sweet spot of balancing is having a really good support system. I have a very good support system so that when I travel, at least I do have people who are taking care of the kids, are taking care of all the needs of the house, keep on going. What is your message to women out there who are willing to venture into the petroleum engineering career but are reflained or are restricted by the environment and the perception out there in the society? I tell them, go for it. Go for it because uh, we are all given different talents. So for example, if you're really good in science, don't force yourself to do what other people are doing. So I would definitely say, go for it. Step out of, your go uh, step out of the box. Don't follow the flock. Just do what uh, you feel like that's the right thing to do. Do not hear about the society that are saying, oh, that's not for girls. You know, you're not supposed to do that. I mean, generations are changing mm -hmm. and science is changing. Uh, everything is changing. And if you feel like you're really good in science, you should definitely pursue and be good at what you, you need to do because uh, they, there's a lot of gap that we're having at the moment when it comes to technology, to science, you know, mathematics. We, especially like, like engineering at the moment, we only have 1,600 1, people that are registered as um, professional engineers out of the 40 million that we have in Kenya. So if we have investors who are coming in and they would like to do something more technical, we don't even have the capacity. So that's a gap that we have. That